One of the great advantages of RAW is its extended dynamic range, which gives you more color and more detail. Instead of a JPEG, which only has 8 bits of data per color component, RAW files have 12 or even 14 bits of color data. A 14-bit image has over 60 times more data per component. That's a staggering amount of information. The problem is that most of this extra data has to be manipulated in an editor to be useful. That's where apps like RAW Power come in. In this video, I'll show you how to recover highlights and raw images using the tools in RAW Power. In another video, I'll focus on shadow detail. While the app has some simple tools that'll do a decent job, if you employ advanced sliders, you'll get much better results. Look at the waves in the middle of this image. There's no detail here at all. Now I'm gonna to switch to a JPEG I made from the RAW to show you the first advantage that RAW files give you. Because JPEGs have only eight bits of range, you cannot extract any of the extra detail in this image. I'll move the exposure slider down and you will see that the background and the waves just become gray. Look at the histogram. There's a big empty spot here. When I move the exposure slider down, there's nothing to fill that area back in again, and that's why everything just goes gray. Now I'll do the same with the RAW. Now as I move the exposure slider, you can see things just slide over and it fills in. And now look at the image here. There's some detail. If I keep going, you can see there's actually quite a lot of detail. Let's talk about clipping indicators. They're up here with the histogram. Each circle next to the word histogram gives you information about overexposure. Hot is a pixel that's overexposed. That means it's greater than one. And a cold pixel is one that is zero or less, which is black. If this first indicator is lit up, then you have overexposed data somewhere in the image. These other indicators tell you about overexposure in each channel individually whether it's in red, green, or blue. Because the waves are white and they're overexposed, then of course, all three channels will be lit up. If I click on the indicator, I'll get an overlay that shows me red for overexposed and blue for black or underexposed pixels. Over and underexposure isn't necessarily a bad thing. We do want both white and black in an image to get good contrast. The key is getting it in the right spots and the right amount. As I move exposure, you'll see the hot pixels disappear from the waves. And then the increase in the other areas because those pixels are becoming darker and darker until they become black. Now to get the detail we want, we'd have to make it a very dark image. And we don't want to do that. So how do we use Raw Power's tools to recover highlights while also maintaining an overall bright image? An obvious first choice is the highlight slider. And if you move that, it will bring back some of the highlights. That may be enough in some cases, but there are other sliders you can use as well. One is recovery and the other is boost. Recovery works like a selective exposure. It just darkens the brightest pixels in the image. And I get even more detail back. Again, we can see before and after. But there's one more trick that we have, and the advantage of this other trick is we can turn down these other sliders, which will give us overall a more pleasing result. And that slider is called Boost. I'm going to reset this adjustment before talking about Boost. Boost is like a master switch. It has a big effect on the overall look of an image. If you move it all the way to zero, you get a very flat, well, raw-like image, which generally lacks contrast. And that's a good choice if you want to have the most control and you want to do a lot of the adjusting yourself. But I find that for well-exposed images, Boost does actually a very nice job of giving me a nice looking image. So it's best to leave it at 1.0 in those situations. But I also find that Boost can be an impediment to correcting highlights in an overexposed image. And that's because Boost has a tendency to brighten images. So as you're correcting the highlights, Boost will end up brightening them up back up again. The solution is to turn down Boost just a little bit. Then you get the advantages of Boost for making images look nice, but it doesn't do too much to overly brighten images that you're trying to correct. I just drag it down to about 0.5. You can see it didn't make the image that much darker, and you get a little bit of detail back. 
The point of that was not to recover highlights, but to just decrease the effect of boost so that the other things that we do will have more effect. Now that we have applied boost, we can now go back to the tone adjustment and start playing with highlights and recovery. In this case, we can just start moving recovery and get that detail back right away. We can maybe nudge highlights just a little bit as well. We can click the show original button here. We can see how quickly we're able to bring back a lot of detail without overly darkening the image. The key is boost. That's a quick tour of highlight recovery in raw power. Check out the video on shadow detail as well. Thanks for watching.